Hey guys, this video, we're going to go through all of my offensive tips for NHL 22. We're going to talk about breaking the puck out, entering the zone, as well as how to cycle and the things that you want to look for to score inside of NHL 22. Now, this is going to range from basic tips that everyone should notice to more mechanical and advanced things like how to do the half spin in NHL 22. Guys, make sure that you subscribe to the channel for the most up-to-date NHL 22 content. And check me out on Twitch. I go live every single day at 1 p.m. Eastern time. Twitch link is down below. Join the Discord as well. Over 2,500 members inside of my Hockey Ultimate Team community. All right, let's get into the offensive tips for NHL 22. First thing that we need to do is discuss the offensive line strategies. And I'm going to recommend behind the net for a couple of reasons. One, I think it is still extremely effective. Two, it's very easy to learn some of the basic strategies that you can use with your AI to cycle the puck and set up plays. One of the things that is going to help you score more often than not is actually having an idea and strategy in place as opposed to you just carrying the puck in and looking for a one-timer or just reacting to whatever the play is happening instead of dictating it. And understanding how to use behind the net is going to help you out immensely. So behind the net for all four line strategies is what I would recommend. And then I'm going to discuss a little bit later, possibly in another video, on how to use Crash the Net because I think it is an extremely important strategy, especially in this game. In terms of the sliders, the reason why I have them set up the way they are, for all for carry, the reason being is that it helps your far side winger from going offside. And again, it doesn't really impact you too much. This is more of an offline thing, but I find that it does help your AI from going offside. Cycle and shoot. So what this will do is have your players actually skate around to actually cycle the puck. This is going to benefit you when using behind the net because it is heavily reliant upon you actually cycling the puck energy and efficiency guys if you do not have a god squad okay i have an unbelievable team the best way that you can actually see this is look at your speed and then look at the endurance of your players if you don't have maxed out guys essentially set this to five the reason being is that your players if they do not have a high enough endurance stat and they're not very quick they're going to run out of gas extremely fast but if you have a very very good team set it all the way to energy in terms of don't block and block, this really doesn't matter, but I just set it to don't block because I don't want my players just randomly sliding around on the ice. All right, next I want to discuss the breakouts, and the reason why I want to talk about the breakouts quickly is because it is an effective way to actually break out the puck, and it is really where your offense starts. So once you get the puck in the defensive zone, I want to show you guys how to effectively break it out, and using these strategies is going to help you out quite a bit. So leave zone early. We'll have your far side winger beeline out of the zone. I do need to mention if you were getting pressured a ton, then I would switch to close support, and the reason being is that you just need to have an outlet to actually get the puck out. But I'm going to show you how to use leave zone early very effectively, and it's actually pretty gross. The next for a control breakout is strong side slant. You're really not going to notice this all too much, but basically when you sit behind the net and actually bring the puck out like you would in the real thing, it'll have your AI working a little bit differently. It'll have your winger cut into the middle, and again, I'll show you what that means in just a little bit. All right, so I want to start with the fundamentals, and we're going to start first with just the breakout. How can you create offense effect? Effectively just from breaking the puck out and one of if not the most important things I want you guys to take away from this video is that you never want to pass the puck from your defender to your winger along the boards and I'm going to show you why. All right, so if you've been watching my streams, I noticed really early on in 22, and I wish I would have noticed this years ago, but shooting the puck with your defender on the breakout out of the zone, and I'm not talking a slap shot or a wrist shot, I'm talking about a flick up where you're aiming with the left stick, is by far the most effective way to break the puck out of the zone, and here is the reason why. One, the AI, if your opponent is defending with an AI, will treat it as a shot. Two, your player will field it like it's a pass. They turn around and will accept it. Another reason is that if they are manually defending it, they have a really hard time of getting in front of it because it's not a pass, it's a shot. So it bypasses the defensive awareness stat on your opponent. Unless he is literally blocking that play with your body, it's going to be able to get through every single time. The other huge benefit of this breakout method is that passes are very slow. Even if you hold them down and fire that pass up, it is still much slower than when you just flick the puck up, which is another huge advantage of this method. The next huge tip I want to get across on the breakout, guys, is that when you have time and space, please just skate the puck up. I see a lot of players, especially in the lower divisions, that always just want to pass. They're pass happy. The second they have the puck on their stick, they're looking for their next pass. More often than not, it's easier to just carry the puck up, and especially with someone that collapses in through the neutral zone, you can weave all the way through their lineup. All right, so in an instance where you're being pressured a lot and you're really not going behind the net to actually start your rush like you would in the real NHL, 
What you want to do is start circling behind your net and watching for two outlet passes because your opponent, more often than not, is not going to pay attention to them. One is the center, and the other one is the far side winger that's going to fly down the ice. This is a really easy method if you are being pressured a ton. All right, now that we've broken the puck out of the zone, what do you do when someone has clogged up the neutral zone? So here is the best way to get into the zone effectively when someone is using the 1-4, just really collapsing at their blue line. What you want to do is drag their players all to one side. Once you've done that, fire a pass back across. Your defenseman will be there. And usually if there's only one player back, you're able to just speed right in. If your player, if you're playing a very good opponent, they'll actually be able to spot this out though. But this is a very, very easy way to get into the zone. All right, so more of a one-on-one -on -one scenario when you're trying to enter the zone. If someone is spamming R1 or the Poe check, which has been pretty prevalent in NHL 22, you want to make sure that if that's happening at the blue line, you back in by doing a half spin holding down L2. The reason for that is that you will draw a penalty more often than not if they are spamming that R1. Very, very easy way to do that, especially if they are spamming R1 and backing up into the zone. All right, guys, now it's time to show you the basics of how to actually use behind the net strategy in the offensive zone and this is going to be your main foundational piece so forget about two on ones breakaways all that stuff it's when you cross the line and now it's like okay what do you do they've set up defensively you need to have a strategy because if you don't you're basically just reacting to what they're doing and that's going to lead to a turnover you not scoring so what you want to do is basically with behind the net you are just looking to go around in a circle around the net between the three forwards now, there's a couple ways to do this, but you want to make sure that you're reversing and then looking for that backdoor player to open up. What I need to stress is this is like kind of like real hockey. You need to have your head up. When you are cycling the puck with this, stop staring at your player with the puck because he is not going to be the one that shoots. You need to be looking in the slot and that back door so that you can find the moment to hit that pass. The next big advantage of behind the net is the backhand and forehand wrap that is now back into NHL 22. One of the most effective ways is to walk out from behind the net on the backhand and just throw it up top. Because behind the net is predicated on you cycling behind the net, it gives you into that position quite often. Or you can hit your player back door like I do here. Now, you can't just live behind the net because your opponent will eventually pick up on that. So you need to create time and space other ways. And you do that by doing the half spins by holding down L2 or LT. And you're using a half spin to create time and space. Now, what you want to do and what you want to remember is go into practice mode. I had a video last year that explained it, and I was stunned how many people did not know it was in the game. If you hold down X or A as you're holding down L2, you will actually spin the opposite way. So you'll actually put your back to the player and protect the puck. And once you get good at actually being able to pull this off comfortably, you'll be able to stop quickly and hit those trailers to give you a lot more time and space. Now, one of the more advanced ways to score in NHL 22 is the saucer pass. Now in 21, there was no pass intercept model, so you could just throw passes blindly through five players, and they would get through. In 22, it's turned back on, so you've got to manually saucer to actually get over some of the players and sticks that are in your way. In a two-on-one or a two-on-two, when your far side winger has not separated enough that you feel comfortable actually throwing a pass over, you've got to just saucer it, and once you learn how to aim it correctly, it's extremely effective in NHL 22. Another big thing I see from players that are struggling to score is that they're not taking advantage of how big rebounds and in tight shots actually work in NHL 22. When you have no other options like this scenario right here, there's no way I can get a pass through. Maybe I can try and take it deep. There is nothing wrong with firing it low. You need to learn how to actually fire it low for the pads, though. You can do this in practice mode or just when you're playing. If you learn how to do that, you can get rebound goals extremely easy in NHL 22. Now, guys, there's many ways to score, like the short side wrister. We didn't even touch on just tips from the point, things like that. I want to save that for some other videos, and I've got a really special one that you guys are going to have on my channel in just a little bit. But for this one, I just want to focus on making sure you guys understand a, the fundamentals of behind the net, but B, also the keep your head up. Your eyes need to be locked on the backdoor player that you're passing to. You need to start focusing on where you're going as opposed to just whoever is pressuring you with the puck carry. You need to be you need to become comfortable with the puck where you don't need to stare at your player anymore because that is going to lead to more goals than anything else I can show you. All right, guys, so that covers all of the fundamentals that you guys need to know to start setting up some strategies and actually using the behind the net strategy in NHL 22. I'll have future videos that are going to break down some of the advanced mechanics of the game. But before you walk, you need to crawl. So once you guys master this, check out my next video on advanced scoring methods. I'll see you guys next time.